Well, today finds me in Fayette County, Pennsylvania, in the Laurel Highlands. We're about 20 miles east of Uniontown, Pennsylvania. This is the Yakagani River you can hear in the background. This is a very popular area in the summertime for whitewater rafting. It's a weekday in March. It's fairly mild, but not a lot of people here today. But I'm on the trail to Cucumber Falls. This is a great place to study cucumber magnolia. This is the most common magnolia that I'm adding to this channel. The one with the widest geographic range. Basically, west of Interstate 81 in western New York and western Pennsylvania. All the way down to the North Georgia Mountains and the Cumberland Plateau of Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And, um... I've got quite a bit of cucumber magnolia growing along this trail. I figured this would be a good place to introduce this plant. Just like the big tooth magnolia, or big big leaf magnolia, it has a uh, fuzzy bud. A little hard to come into focus here. But unlike the big leaf magnolia and the umbrella magnolias and the Fraser magnolias, this one has a rough bark even from a young age. So it has a uh, furrowed, kind of a ridge and valley type bark, even at three inch diameter here. And has fairly small buds as well. They're a little hard to see, but there is one in the background there. We're looking up at it. So that's the, uh, it's a pubescent bud. I got one the other day in my pocket here. while hiking a different trail. This one's quite a bit larger, it's about a half inch long, but still on average smaller than those of the Umbrella, Fraser, and Big Leaf Magnolia. So let's keep studying these trees along this trail. This is a real common tree in the Allegheny Mountains of Western Pennsylvania. And just a short distance down the trail here, we've got a medium sized cucumber magnolia tree. Unlike the big leaf and the umbrella magnolias and the Fraser magnolias, this is the fourth magnolia that I am adding to this channel. This one does achieve full size, height and width. They can get quite large and they can live a long um, and let's say prosperous life in these moisture ravines of the Allegheny Mountains and the Cumberland Plateau. And this one's as high as the surrounding trees. We've got a beautiful American beach next to it here. So the bark is definitely furrowed and ridged the whole way up on these larger trees. It's just a little bit looser than some of the trees it looks like, which would include its close cousin, this tulip poplar right here. So tulip poplar has the ridges and furrows. The bark doesn't crumble quite as easily. And tulip poplar often has these obvious branch scars on these trees. So where the branches used to come out, you see those little discolorations. Sometimes they're even V-shaped on the fresher branch scars. I don't see that too much on these cucumber magnolias. And I do have a cucumber magnolia leaf here from last year. And guidebook says between 6 and 10 inches long, and that's about what this one is. So much smaller than the umbrella and big leaf magnolia leaves. It does not have the ear lobes like you would find at the bottom of the big leaf magnolia leaf or the Fraser magnolia leaf. But it could be confused with an umbrella magnolia except it is not of the largest, larger size. Let's keep hiking along here. It's a beautiful trail. Let's see if we can find some more examples of this tree. And just a little further down the trail to Cucumber Falls here at the Ohio Pile State Park. Got plenty more examples of Cucumber Magnolia. Got a fairly large one here, probably almost two feet in diameter. Got that real obviously furrowed bark. Reaching all the way to the sky and you can't see it in this video but I can clearly see the pubescent buds that are a silky white color as I look up towards the sky. Another identifying feature of this tree in the wintertime is it often leads its, its um, fruits on the ground. 
It's starting to decay pretty much this time of year. So they kind of blend in, but sometimes when they're newer to the ground or newer uh, have fallen in the, in, the, in the late fall, they're pretty obvious. This one here kind of blends in with the background here. But this fruit is about three inches long. They get like a red berry on the end when they're still ripe. The animals love to eat those, and those are pretty much gone at this point in the season. But you often find what's left of the stalk and this fruit pod, or the fruit, um, on the ground, even in the late winter, or even sometimes in the middle of the next growing season. So I've got several of them right here with my pocket knife there for scale. So they're about two or three inches long. And there's some more of our leaves here, which are six to ten inches long. And they're covering the ground here, too. Here's another fruit pod right here. Mixed in with the leaves there, right there underneath that stem. So, these trees are pretty easy to find in the Allegheny Mountains. And um, don't have the showy flowers that the other magnolias have, but they're a common tree. And one that indicates moist soil and usually um, pretty good habitat for growing trees. You won't find them in the real uh, fire prone areas. We'll continue studying these cucumber magnolias when they have their leaves this summer.